Step 2. Placing Objects In this step, we will work with structural elements such as steel beams, add objects such as railings, and place furnishing elements to the project as well. We will also become familiar with ARCHICAD's special snap points. Temporary snap points can be automatically created using various methods to speed up the element creation and editing. Remove the marquee from the floor plan window. Activate the first preset view from the Placing Objects folder of the Navigator view map. Switch to the Column tool in the toolbox. In the Favorites palette, activate the Column 3 Favorite from the list. Open the Column Default Settings dialog by clicking the Column icon in the Info box. Open the Floor Plan and Section tab page and scroll to the Core Structure container. Click the Complex Structure pop-up list to display available steel profiles to be used for columns. Notice the variety of the available steel profiles and remember that these can all be modified with the help of ARCHICAD's Profile Manager. Make sure that the I-200 Steel entry is selected. Click Cancel to leave this dialog. Make sure that the True Line Weight option is switched off at the View On-Screen View Options menu. This will display all construction elements by uniform thin hairlines. Zoom in to Label 1 as much as necessary to place the column precisely. Click at the point of Label 1 to place the first column. These columns, along with the beams we'll place afterwards, serve as the structure on which the curtain wall is built. Click on the points of Label 2 to Label 5 to place four additional columns on the floor plan. Activate the next preset view from the view map. Switch to the Beam tool from the toolbox. Activate the Beam 1 favorite from the Favorites list. We are now at the roof level where the top of the entrance curtain wall is located. This is where we will place the beams with their axis along the curtain wall grids. Create a beam by clicking on the point of Label 1.1 to define the starting point of the beam. Then, click on the point of Label 1.2 to define the ending point of the beam. Activate the next preset view located from the view map. Select the beam you've just placed. Select the Move, Drag Multiple Copy command from the Context menu. Click on the point of Label 1 to specify the starting point of the drag vector. Successively, click the points of Labels 2, 3, 4, and 5 to define the ending points of the drag vectors to place four copies of the beam. Press Escape to complete the operation and once again to deselect the new beams. Activate the next preset view from the view map. Let's switch back to the true line weight display by activating this option from the View on screen view options menu. Switch to the object tool in the toolbox. Activate the railing 1 favorite from the list. Click on the point of Label 1 to place the railing object. Select the railing you've just created. Notice the black and violet colored hotspots of the objects. These are special points of the objects that define corners, centers of posts, and so on. They will become important in a later step. Select the Element Snap preset view from the navigator. Activate the Move Drag Context menu command. Click near the selected railing and start dragging it toward the point defined by Label 2. While you are dragging the object, a ghost outline is displayed with ghost rectangles around the hotspots of the object. Element Snap helps you snap special points of elements to each other to accelerate element placement and editing. Move the railing object towards Label 2. Notice that the vertex of the railing object will snap to the corner wall when they are close to each other. 
The rectangular hotspot changes to a thick rectangle, signaling that a possible snap has been found. Click with your mouse to accept the offered snap. The railing will be placed to the desired position without having to enter specific numeric coordinates. With the railing still selected, select Edit, Copy to copy it to the clipboard. Select View, Navigate, Stories, Go Up a Story to go to the second floor. Select Paste to paste the railing. At the Paste Options dialog, select the original location and the Zoom to Pasted Elements radio buttons. This dialog appears when less than the whole element is visible at the current zoom level after completing a paste operation. Click the Paste button to proceed. Click outside the marquee that appears to complete the paste operation. Go to the third floor by activating the Go Up a Story command as you did before. Paste the railing on the third floor as well. Activate the next preset view from the view map. While still in the object tool, activate the stair railing 1 favorite from the list. Place the intermediate stair railing piece by clicking at the point of label 1. Activate the next preset view located from the view map. Activate the stair railing 2 favorite from the list. Place the intermediate stair railing piece by clicking at the point of label 1. Select the railing you just placed and copy it to the clipboard by activating the Edit Copy command. Go to the first floor and paste the railing here. Go to the second floor and paste the railing into this location also. Activate the next preset view from the view map. Activate the stair railing 3 favorite from the list. Place the intermediate stair railing piece by clicking at the point of label 1. We will now start placing the railings on the flat roof of the building. Activate the next preset view from the view map. With the object tool selected, Activate the Railing 2 Favorite in the Favorites palette. Place the railing by clicking Label Arrow 1. Continue creating railings by activating Views 5.2.10 through 5.2.17. Always activate the favorite called for by the name of the view, and create the railing objects called for by the labels. We are now ready to create the ramp that will lead to the basement parking area. Activate the Ramp Preset view from the Navigator view map. With the Object tool still selected, activate the Ramp 1 Favorite in the Favorites palette. Create the Ramp object by clicking at the point of Label 1. Activate the next preset view from the view map. This will display the previously created ramp with the building in the 3D window. Return to the floor plan by activating the floor plan icon in the Mini Navigator toolbar. Activate the next preset view in the view map. We will now start placing sanitary objects and kitchen furniture. Select the Toilet 1 favorite in the list. Select the View, Special Snap Options, Set Special Snap Values menu to open the Special Snap Values dialog. Enter 200 in the Distance field and click OK to proceed. Activate the Distance option from the Special Snap Points drop-down list on the standard toolbar. This method will create temporary Special Snap Points at set distance intervals on linear elements. The distance is now set to 200 millimeters, meaning a special snap point will be placed at each 200 millimeter interval from the end of the element you hover your cursor over. Activate the Between Intersection Points option from the Special Snap Points drop-down list on the standard toolbar.